decade following the War of 1812, there were a number of battle scares, and the British prepared for a possible American invasion. After building the Rideau Canal to provide a safe inland route for troops and supplies, they built Fort Henry. But the entrances to Kingston Harbour, the canal, and the Royal Navy Dockyard remained vulnerable. In 1845, uh, there was a hasty decision to augment the harbour defences and six towers were built along the harbour front. Two ditch towers at Fort Henry and four Martello towers along the harbour front of Kingston. Their designs varied. The, the standard design is a squat thick tower with rooftop artillery. And the one just behind us here, the Fort Frederick Tower, is the largest of the Kingston Towers. Um, designed for all around the fence, not just artillery platform on the top deck. The fort itself is built in layers of defense. Towards the water, there's, there are massive earthworks to uh, absorb any enemy shot coming in. There are batteries of guns on these earthworks. Uh, to the rear of the fort, there's a small curtain wall designed to defend against small arms attack. The tower itself is a main gun platform. There's three 32-pounder guns mounted on that tower. During the harsh Canadian winters, guns mounted on top of the towers were exposed to the elements and needed protection. So all the towers in Canada were built with snow roofs, which were removable to allow the guns to be free to engage the enemy. If the enemy overcame the outer defences of the fort and were attacking that tower, the tower itself has layers of defence. There's a dry ditch around the base. The original entrance would have had a drawbridge, so you would have raised the bridge just like an old medieval castle. The, um, the projections around the base of the tower are part of the sophisticated design. They're called caponniers, and there are four projections around the base in the dry ditch, which are designed so that defending soldiers inside the tower could bring fire to bear up and down the ditch. On the first and second floors of the tower, there are 32-pounder carronades, which would be firing uh, grape shot or shrapnel. Uh, out across the open area of the fort, simply similar to a modern Claymore mine. So this area where we're standing now would just be a killing zone uh, covered by fire from the guns inside the fort. Fort Henry and the Martello Towers that are sort of placed around are actually a part of a fortification system. So the fort is the sort of main anchor for it, but in, in reality, the, uh, they're relying on something called intersecting arcs of fire. Each of the towers has its own zone that it's responsible for. The guns can pivot up there and basically create a, an arc that goes completely around your area. All those arcs overlap, and it's a, it's a really intricate system that if anybody does get in between any of those, they're getting the gunfire from both of those two points at the same time. Fort Frederick is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the official museum for the Royal Military College of Canada. It has some intriguing exhibits, including the Addison Hotshot Stove, which was designed in 1846. Cannonballs would be placed inside the stove and heated until red hot, then carefully transferred into muzzle-loading guns and fired at the enemy ships. When they struck their target, the shot would become embedded and the wooden sailing ship catch fire. This munition gave birth to the common expression, he's a hot shot. We have found broken children's toys just outside of the fort, which indicate that the tower behind us was actually used as a married quarters by British troops and families and children lived in that tower for a number of years. So it's the human aspect that makes it interesting. The Royal Military Academy has buildings that date from 1812 to 1820 including the Commandant's House that was originally built as a naval hospital, the Stone Frigate which served as a large warehouse, and the Dockyard Entrance and Gatehouse Porter's Lodge Complex. Uh, Kingston's unique in that it has almost all of its fortifications from that period, and that's been not the case in a lot of other places where uh, the, the, the city has grown up and really encompassed the, uh, the fortifications that were there. But Kingston's sort of interesting in that it's got the main port of fortification, which is Fort Henry, and then it's also got the, uh, the four Martello Towers. That makes it really a special place. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.